Hello and welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn how to play Flotilla, a game published by WizKids, and unlike some other games, this game is only for 3 to 5 players, so we cannot play it with 2 players. And here is how it plays. To set up the game, place this hub board to the middle of the table. Then place this survivor track into the middle of the hub board and make sure you choose the one which corresponds to the number of players in the game. Then place the survivor tracker disc on the top space of this survivor track. Then place this dock tile above the hub board and again take the one which is appropriate to your player count. Then these are guild dials and make sure each dial is pointing to the number one. Place this guild board off to the side of the play area and place one resource barrel of each color onto these designated spaces. Then place this sonar board below the guild board and place this sonar tracker disc onto the leftmost space. Sort all the objective tiles by their type, create small stacks of the tiles of the same type and sort them from the highest value to the lowest value. Then select or randomly choose one stack per player and place these stacks on the left side of the guild board and since this is the teal side of the guild board, place these stacks with the teal side face up. Then select or randomly choose one more stack per player and place these stacks on the right side of the guild board, this time with the orange side face up. So for the three player game you should have three stacks on both sides of the guild board. You can put the remaining objective tiles back into the box. Take these artifact tiles and randomly choose one tile of each type and return it to the box. Then put all the remaining tiles into the small bag. Then take all the ocean tiles and put them into the large bag. Then create the initial supply of victory points. Take 100 victory points per player and it's a good idea to use some smaller denominations as well and set all the remaining victory point tokens aside as a reserve. When the initial supply runs out, it triggers the end of the game and after that players will collect victory points from that reserve. Now separate these non-starter crew cards by their color, which is actually their guild, and also by their tier. So you will have 8 small decks and each deck contains 5 cards. Now from each deck, randomly choose one card per player, so in a 3 player game each small deck will contain three cards. You can put the remaining cards back into the box. Now this is what you have to do with each guild. Take those tier 2 cards you have selected, shuffle them and place them with this teal with the sink side up. Then take the tier 1 cards, shuffle them and place them on top of the tier 2 deck. Again with the sink side which means the teal side up. When you're done, place this deck of guild cards on the corresponding space on the guild board. Then repeat the process for all other guilds. Then randomly choose the first player and give that player this starting tile. Then the next player in a clockwise direction will take this second player starting tile, next player will get the third player starting tile and so on and so forth. Attach the starting tile to the edge of the hub board and try to make sure you leave the equal margin of space between all tiles. Then each player will take a player board with this sink side up. Place 6 outposts and 3 skiffs next to the designated spaces of that player board and place the 4th skiff on the starting tile which is marked by this icon. Then collect the currency indicated on the starting tile and place it next to your player board. Place all the seal tokens next to your player board Place both toxicity markers on their starting positions. One guild influence disc on the topmost space of each guild track. And six starter crew cards that will form your hand. One starter card from each guild, one scholar and one captain. All of them with this sink side up. Make sure you have some room available next to your player board for the discard pile. And with that we're ready to go. Flotilla is the name of the last bastion of the human civilization after a nuclear catastrophe. Players are in the roles of the great captains who are trying to bring the prosperity to this flotilla. There are two distinct modes of play, 
One of them is called Thinkside, and Thinksiders explore the ocean and have easier access to resources. In the Skyside mode, players focus on building these watercraft tiles, so they're not able to get the resources, they have to buy them in the market. Both modes are well balanced and you can switch from sink side to sky side anytime during the game. However, you can also win the game by being on the sink side the whole time or by switching to the sky side on your very first move. The object of the game is to collect victory points and you do that by either building the flotilla or by completing the objectives either on the sink side or also on the sky side. In Flotilla, players take turns, starting with the first player and then going in a clockwise direction. On your turn, you will play a single card from your hand and resolve the effect of that card. When resolving effects, you first have to resolve this sale or income effect. This sale number indicates how many spaces you may move your skiff. This income icon indicates how many coins or how much currency you receive. After that, you resolve the effect of the card indicated by these icons and described by the text. All cards are double-sided. One side is this sink side with the teal symbol and the other side with this orange symbol is the sky side. All players start on the sink side, which means they use this teal side of the cards. When you turn from sink side to sky side, you will only use these orange sides of the cards and you will never be able to go back to sink side. In addition, there are four guilds in the game, founders, delvers, traders and speakers, distinguished by the color. Then the scholar belongs to all guilds and captain doesn't belong to any guild. In this section of the video, I will talk about the basic effects of the cards when you play as a sink sider. These founders allow you to draw and place the ocean tiles. First, draw the indicated number of tiles from the bag and as a sink sider you will always use these sides of the tiles with these resource markers. The other side of those tiles is relevant when you play as a sky sider. Now, for each toxicity icon, and you can see two icons on this tile, move the toxicity marker one space up. You have to apply these toxicity markers from all the tiles you have drawn. I will describe this toxicity track later in the video. Now, after drawing the tiles, you can place certain number of them. When placing the tile, make sure it is adjacent to at least one of your existing tiles. Your tiles may never touch any of the opponent's tiles, and in addition, you may never cross the opponent's boundary. Boundaries start in the center of the starting tile and extend along these lines like this. Then each tile has this depth symbol. There are three levels of depth, shallow tiles, shelf tiles and deep tiles. Deep tiles can never touch the shallow tiles. If you are allowed to place fewer tiles than you draw, return the remaining tiles back into the bag. Anytime you complete a full circle of one color, you can draw one artifact from this artifact back. I will describe the use of these artifacts at the end of the video. When you play the Delver card, you can dive for resources. And you will do that by rolling these dive dice. For each of your skiffs on an ocean tile, take one die of the corresponding color. These dice are shallows dice, these are shelf dice, and these are deep dice. So, in this example, for this skiff, I would use one shelf die. If I would have these two skiffs on these two ocean tiles, I would take one shelf die and one deep die. However, if my skiff would be on a tile with this depletion token, which means the tile has been depleted, I wouldn't get any die for that skiff. After taking the dice for your skiffs, take any additional dice as indicated on the card. In this example, I would take two additional shallows dice. Now take all the dice and roll them. For each barrel symbol, choose one of your skiffs on an undepleted tile and add one resource of that type to the skiff. Each skiff can hold maximum four barrels. Since I have rolled four barrel symbols, I can take four resources and I can take any combination of these green and yellow resources. 
So, for example, I could take three green resources and one yellow resource. Then for each of these sonar symbols, you have to look at this sonar track and treat all these sonar icons on the dice as the icon indicated by the current position of the sonar tracker disk. So in this example, each sonar symbol would actually mean one toxicity symbol. That means you would have to increase your toxicity marker on your player board. The same applies if you would roll any toxicity symbol directly, for each symbol rolled, you have to move your toxicity marker one space. Then this is the depletion icon. When you roll only one icon, nothing happens. However, when you roll more depletion icons, ignore the first one and for each other one, place one depletion token on the tile when you currently have one of your skiffs. If you would have to place more depletion tokens that you have skiffs, place those additional tokens on any other undepleted tile. Later in the game, you can no longer dive for resources at the depleted tile. And finally, if you roll any of these survivor symbols, for each of those symbols, move the survivor tracker disk one space clockwise. For each space you pass or land on, take the indicated rewards. Again, I will briefly talk about this survivor track at the end of the video. When you play the trader card, you can gain some money and then make certain number of transactions. There are three types of transactions you can take and they are depicted in the top right corner of this guild board. The first icon indicates that you can sell or buy resources. You can only sell resources which you have in your personal reserve Resources on your skiffs are not in your reserve yet. When you sell or buy resources, you sell or buy them for the indicated price. So in this example, both blue and red resources are sold for four currency. One resource token is a one transaction. So if I would decide to sell these three resource tokens, that would be three transactions. And for those three transactions, I would gain 15 currency. You can combine these transactions any way you want, so for example, you can sell one type of resources, then you can buy another type of resources, and so on and so forth. Then after you finish selling or buying resources, you have to adjust the market price. Let's say I have decided to sell these three green resources. Since I'm making more resources available, I am decreasing its market value. So, for each resource token, I have to move this resource tracker one space to the left, making that resource cheaper. These tokens are obviously going back to the general reserve. Then let's say I would decide to buy one yellow resource, which means I'm making that resource more scarce and thus increasing its market value. Again, for each resource token, I have to move this resource tracker one space to the right. In case you have to reduce the price of a certain resource and there is nowhere to go, for each resource token that would cause the resource tracker to go below the lowest space, gain one victory point. For each resource token that would cause the resource tracker to go above the space, gain two victory points. Now, the second type of transaction you can do is to buy an outpost and the objective tile. When you do, Take the topmost outpost from your player board and pay the indicated price. Take the outpost and place it on one of these empty construction sites. If you wouldn't have any construction site available, you have an option to pay additional 10 currency and place the outpost on an open water. Then take the topmost tile from any of these objective stacks. Because you are a sink sider, you can only take these sink side objective tiles. After taking the tile, score that tile immediately, take the victory points you have scored and place the tile somewhere next to your player board or under your player board. If you would take the last tile from the stack, score the tile normally but leave it in its place. It can be scored any number of times by any number of players without being removed. That applies to all stacks either sink side or sky side. The third type of transaction you can do is to buy the additional skiff. If you do, you have to pay 12 currency and then you can place a new skiff onto the starting tile dock which is indicated by this symbol. Crew cards from the Speakers Guild allow you to gain influence with guilds. Advance your tracker along the corresponding track 
gain bonuses for each space. These spaces will give you currency or victory points. These bonuses allow you to draw and place one ocean tile. These bonuses allow you to take one resource token of any type. You add that resource directly into your reserve. These bonuses allow you to take the top card from the corresponding deck. Each track has this grey arrow, which means you can go directly from this space onto this space and skip this bonus if you wish so. If you don't, and if you land on this space, take the topmost card from the deck, add it to your hand, and you have a new crew card available. This is the primary way of recruiting new characters into your crew. If you decide to take this bonus, but the deck is empty, gain two victory points instead. Then this bonus allows you to move one space on the survivor track, and finally, this bonus on top of each track allows you to take one of your seal tokens and place it on the corresponding guild banner. The player with the most seal tokens in each guild will gain 10 victory points at the end of the game, the second player will gain 5 victory points. When you play the scholar, you can copy an opponent's top side card. That means the card which is on top of their discard pile. Since we are Singsiders at the moment, this scholar can only copy another Singsiders card. As this symbol indicates, scholar belongs to all guilds. And finally, when you play the Captain card, you can rally your crew. That means take all the cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand. In addition, take one coin for each card you have taken into your hand this way, including the Captain. And when you play a Captain as a Singsider, you may, but you don't have to, you may turn into a Skysider. Turning from the Singsider into a Skysider is a one-way ticket. You can only do it when you are a Singsider and when you play the Captain card. You don't have to do this at all, but you can also do it as the first turn of the game. When you do, first, turn all your cards from the sink side to the sky side. Since you have played the Captain, take all the cards into your hand. Then flip the player board, but keep the toxicity markers in their position. Now, as you can see, as a Skysider, you don't need skiffs anymore. Take all your skiffs from the ocean tiles and sell them for the price indicated on this dock tile. If you are the first to turn into a sky side, sell them for the price from the top row, if you are the second for the price from the second row, and so on and so forth. In this case, if you would be the first to turn into a sky side for three skiffs, you would get three times 16 coins. If you would have any resources on your skiffs, put them into your reserve. Then take all the non-starter ocean tiles with outposts on them and return the outposts to the box and the tiles into the bag. Then flip the starting tile to the other side, keep it in the same position and if there was an outpost on this tile, keep it on the same place as well. Then take all the remaining ocean tiles, flip them to their sky side and put them into your reserve. Now you can immediately build the number of these tiles based on the number indicated on the dog tile. If you would be the first one to move to the sky side, you can take one tile and place it next to your starting tile using the exact same rules as for placing the ocean tiles. However, this time you would score the tile and how you build and how you score the tiles is described in the next section. Building and scoring the tiles is part of the action when you play a character from the Founders Guild. These characters will allow you to draw and then build certain number of ocean tiles. First, draw the number of tiles as indicated on the card. Even though you are a Skysider, look at the sink side first, apply the toxicity and adjust your marker on the toxicity track, and then you can flip the tile to the sky side. Then you can build the indicated number of tiles from your reserve. When you build, take the tile and pay the cost, which is certain number of resources of a particular color. In this case, it is two blue resources. Then you can take the tile and place the tile using the exact same rules as for placing this sink side tiles. 
which means the tile has to be adjacent to one of your existing tiles and you may never touch the opponent's tiles or cross their boundaries. Immediately after building the tile, you would score that tile. Scoring depends on the color of the tile you have just placed and the watercraft to which you have added the tile. In this example, you would only score one point, which you would take from the initial supply. Now, if the game effect would allow you to build another tile, and if you would have enough resources, you can build and score another tile again. However, let's stop for a moment and let me explain how the scoring exactly works. When you build the tile, first you need to check whether you have attached that tile to any existing watercraft. Now, what is the watercraft? Watercraft is a contiguous area of these kind of wooden buildings on water which are connected to each other. How to say whether the tiles are connected to each other? Well, that's sometimes pretty difficult to say, but from what I understand, these watercraft structures always have an ending in the middle of the side of the tile, never in the corner. So looking at this tile, for example, this watercraft really has an ending in the middle of this side. So if I would rotate the tile like this, these two tiles would be connected. So after building the tile, look at the watercraft it was added to and the watercraft can contain multiple tiles, even the tiles of the different colors. You can tell the color of the tile by looking at the resources. Now this tile has this hexagon icon which indicates a building of that color, red building. This watercraft contains another red building, so that's two red buildings in one watercraft. So because we have added the red tile, count up the number of red buildings in the same watercraft. That's two at the moment. Then add the number from the guild dial of the same color. So it's one plus two buildings, that's three, and that's the first number we need. The second number we need is the number of contiguously connected tiles of the same color as the tiles we have just built. And again, that's three as well, these three tiles. This tile is not connected to these red tiles, as you can see over here. Now, we will multiply the first number by the second number, and three times three is nine points we would get for building this tile. Now let's take another example. If I would build the tile like this, I have this watercraft in which I have two red buildings, plus one on the red dial, that's three, which is my first number. The second number is the number of contiguous tiles of the same color, and in this case it's only one. Only one red contiguous tile. So I would score three points. However, if I would place the tile like this, my first number would be one from the dial and one from the red building, which is two, and I would have two contiguous red tiles together, so two times two is four points. One last important note, the first number, which is the sum of the buildings of the same color and the guild dial number, can never be greater than four. So even though the dial shows three and I have two red buildings, together. That would be 5 in total, but the maximum can be only 4. 4 multiplied by 3 contiguous tiles of the red color would be 12 points. When you build the tile and you create the full circle of these three sonar symbols, you can advance this sonar tracker disk and immediately score the indicated number of victory points. When you play the Delver card, you will not dive for resources, but this time you will delve technologies from recovered salvage. You will roll certain number of these orange research dice and potentially you might be able to manipulate some of those dice. Then after rolling and manipulating the dice, for each number gain that much currency, which could be four or six on some of the dice. Then for three symbols of the same color, like these three yellow symbols, Immediately take the bonuses from all these artifact tiles, which are next to the guild of the same color. In this case, you can gain two influence with the same guild. Each guild can have maximum three artifact tiles. These tiles would belong to the blue guild. 
This purple symbol is a wild symbol and you can treat it as the symbol of any other color. Then if you roll three gears, you have a technological breakthrough and you can increase any guild dial by one. Skyside traders worked in the exact same way as Singside traders. You can simply make certain number of transactions. However, you may not buy skips and when you buy the outpost, you take the objective tile from the right side. Speakers also worked in the exact same way as the sync side speakers, with one small difference. When you get these rewards, you can only draw the tiles and put them into your reserve, you cannot build them. When you play the scholar, you can copy one of the opponent's sky side top side crew card, which means the top card from their discard pile. Again, it has to be a sky side opponent, you cannot copy the sync side opponent's card. And when you play the captain, you rally your crew and you get two coins for each card you have collected, including the captain card. When the initial victory point supply runs out, finish the current round and then take one more final round, so that each player has the equal number of turns. If you would gain any more victory points, take them from this additional reserve. Then score victory points for each guild. The player with the most seal tokens gets 10 victory points. The player with the second most seals earns 5 victory points. In case of a tie, the least toxicity breaks the tie. In case the toxicity is the same as well, both players would score 10 victory points, the third player would get nothing. If there is a tie for the second place, both players would score 5 points. If players have no seals on the guild banner, they would not score any points for that guild. Then players would gain or lose victory points based on their marker on the toxicity track. Then they get one victory point for every five coins in their personal reserve and one point for every two resources. Sum up all the points and the player with the most points is the winner. When you play the card, first you have to resolve this sale or income effect. When you sail, the number in the sail icon indicates how many spaces you can move your skiff or skiffs. For one point, you can move one of your skiffs to an adjacent tile. You can freely move your skiffs through the tiles with another skiff and you can also have multiple skiffs on the same tile. Anytime your skiff gets to the tile with this drop of icon, you can take those resources from the skiff and put them into your personal reserve. Dropping of resources does not stop your movement, so you can continue on. Anytime you gain toxicity, move the marker one space on the track. When the marker reaches the last space, move the bottom marker to the next space and return the first marker to the original position. This penalty scoring marker indicates how many points you will lose or potentially gain at the end of the game and the toxicity also breaks the ties for guild seal majorities. Anytime you get a reward with this icon, you rescue a survivor. Advance the tracker one space forward and immediately take the benefit. These bonuses will give you victory points. Over here, you can draw the top card from any guild deck and when you get to the topmost space, the first icon indicates that you can take an artifact from the artifact bag the second one indicates that you can increase one dial of your choice by one. And then you have to take two toxicity. When you place an ocean tile and you complete a circle, full circle of the same color, you can draw an artifact. Draw the random tile from the bag and immediately gain the benefit depicted. Then flip the tile to the other side and insert it into the appropriate slot on the hub board. Each guild can have maximum three artifacts of the appropriate type. If there are no artifacts in the bag, gain four victory points instead. The position of the tracker disc on the sonar track determines the value of this sonar icon on the dive dice. We have already talked about all these symbols on the track, except for this one. If the tracker would be in this position and you would roll the sonar symbol, in addition to moving the disc on the survivor track, 
you can take one more die of the same color as the die on which you have rolled this sonar symbol and add the symbol from the die to your die results. Then if any sky side player completes a full circle of these sonar symbols, that player can advance this tracker one space forward and gain immediately the number of victory points depicted on that tile. If you would ever need to move the disc further, instead gain five victory points. So that's how you play Flotilla. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.